All right, I'll go ahead and call this uh, meeting of the Planning Commission to order. First order of business is the roll call. Chair Wilson. Present. Vice Chair Kurth. Here. Commissioner Huber. Here. Commissioner Porter. Here. Commissioner Dew. Present. Thank you. All right, will you please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance uh, by, led by Commissioner Porter and Commissioner Huber. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings and the opportunity to meet, evaluate, and discuss issues of concern to citizens in the city of Victorville. <clears throat> Lord, be with those who are serving our country at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our first order of business is the approval of the minutes from both our February 11th, 2015 meeting and the March 11th, 2015 meeting. We'll do them each separately. I'll move to approve the regular Planning Commission uh, meeting minutes for February 11th, 2015. Second. Call for a vote, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Those minutes are approved. And I'll make a motion to move to the approval of the regular Planning Commission meeting minutes of March 11th, 2015. Second. We have a first and a second. Have a vote, please. All in favor of approval of those minutes? Aye. Aye. Unanimous approved. Thank you. All right. I'll go ahead and move to agenda item number one. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number one is case PLN 15-00001. It is a site plan to allow for the construction of a new medical office building with an environmental exemption on property located on the west side of Hesperia Road, approximately 530 feet north of Nisqually Road. The applicant is requesting the development of this 6,000 square foot one-story medical office building, which is located in the general commercial district. Staff finds that the proposed building complies with all development standards. Therefore, staff recommends approval subject to conditions. We're available if you have any questions. Thank you. Go ahead and open up a public hearing in regards to agenda item number one. I have a card from uh, Robert Martinez. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Robert Martinez. I'm the project architect. Uh, we've uh, first wanted to thank staff for their help. Um, uh, been very helpful in getting this getting this to this point. Um, we've read the conditions of approval. We're in agreement, and we're here to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Aye. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak to agenda item number one? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment. Bring it back to the commission. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll move uh, to adopt resolution P15-007, uh, approving case number PLN 15-001, and find the project categorically exempt under section 5332 entitled Enfield Development Projects of the State Guidelines to Implement the California Environmental Quality Act. I'll second. We have a first motion by Commissioner Porter, a second by Commissioner Huber. Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimously approved your project. Thank you. Thank you. Go on to agenda item number two. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number two is case PLN 15-00002. It is a tentative parcel map with an environmental exemption to allow for the creation of two separate parcels from one existing parcel. This is located on property at the northeast corner of Mesa View Drive and Oliveira Road. The proposal consists of the subdivision of a 20-acre parcel that is currently designated as single family residential and general commercial. 
The proposed subdivision will separate the zoning districts into individual parcels. Staff finds that the proposal meets all development standards uh, subject to conditions. And we're available if you have any questions. Oh, I might add there wasn't one add on. Um, our engineering department's requesting a revision to condition number 15, which would change uh, the drainage course from being dedicated as a letter lot to an easement. So that's available for your consideration. Okay. With that, I'll go ahead and open up public comment for agenda item number two. I have one card for a Carl Mullet. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Carl Malik. I'm with Kimberly Horn. Um, we're the engineers on the project, and uh, we're in agreement with the conditions. We do ask that you uh, consider the change on condition number 15 and allow that to be an easement rather than a, a lettered lot. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions if you have any. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I, I would like to ask the staff how, um, how often is something of this nature customary? It's, it's very customary, especially in a, uh, a situation where a property has split zoning. Um, the parcel, they, they want to move some of the parcels, sell it off, uh, so they want to create that individual ownership, and this parcel map would allow them to do that. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any additional questions? Anyone else who wishes to speak to agenda item number two? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to the commission. Uh, to Second. We have a first motion by Commissioner Huber, a second by Commissioner Kurth. I would like to call for the vote. Everybody uh, in favor? Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That project has been approved. Thank you. And agenda item number three. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from uh, on this uh, agenda item because I own property adjacent to it and I just sold that property to them last year. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number three is case PLM 15-00004. It is a tentative parcel map with an environmental exemption to allow for the creation of two parcels from one existing parcel. This is located on property, located on the northwest corner of 11th Avenue and Winona Street. Uh, the, the applicant is requesting approval of this map to split the 11 acre, acre parcel in half Parcel one of the parcel map is slated to be a development of a 170 bed skilled nursing facility. The planning commission previously approved that facility at their June 11th, 2014 meeting. Uh, the nursing facility is expected to begin construction sometime this year. At this point, there's nothing slated for parcel two of this map. However, the uh, proposal meets all development standards uh, as conditioned and staff recommends approval and we're available if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and open up the public comment for agenda item number three, if anyone wishes to speak to agenda item number three. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Bring it back to the commission.
And I'll go ahead and second that. We have a first by Commissioner Huber, a second by Chair Wilson. Can I call for the vote, please? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That project is approved with uh, Commissioner Porter absent from the vote. And we'll move on to agenda item number four. Um, before we start, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to disclose that my, my brokerage firm is affiliated um, with the next three project items, and I do believe that I have economic interest involved. I'd request to recuse myself from items four, five, and six. Okay. As Chairman Commissioners, agenda item number four is uh, PLN 1505. It's a conditional use permit modification to allow for amendments to an approved master sign program for the Crossroads uh, Shopping Center located at the northeast corner of U.S. Highway 395 and Palmdale Road. Uh, the changes to the program include allowing for up to two square feet per frontage of wall signage on secondary building elevations, adding two monument signs on Palmdale Road, and adding uh, three directional signs within the interior of the project. A staff supports these modifications and supports the, the completion of this sign program. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public comment for agenda item number four. Is anyone wishing to speak to agenda item number four? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Discussion? I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to approve uh, or to find that the project is categorically exempt pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15311 and adopt resolution P-15-011 approving the conditional use permit modification case number PLN 15-00005, subject to the attached conditions of approval. I'll second. Oh. We have a first uh, motion by Chair Wilson, a second by Commissioner Porter. I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That project has been approved with Commissioner Kurth recused and actually absent from the vote. And we'll go ahead and move to agenda item number five. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number five is PLN 15-6. It is several requests, a conditional use permit to allow for a charter school, a site plan to allow for the installation of exterior playground, a zone change to reclassify the property from C2 general commercial to C1 neighborhood commercial, and the environmental exemptions that go along with it. This is being proposed by Hope Academy Charter Incorporated. The location is 17125 Silica Drive. It's near the intersection of Hesperia Road and Silica Drive. And if the commission remembers, the property neighboring this property was changed to C1 about two years ago or so, maybe a little bit more, um, for a church to go in there. The reason we did that was because we felt that this property isn't very well suited for C2 general commercial retail uses. Uh, the design of the buildings, the, the location away from the intersection, the building away from the street, um, it's just not designed for good uh, commercial use. So therefore, C1 allows for charter schools and churches and uses more neighborhood service oriented, and this would suit that well. So we recommend support. Good. I'll go ahead and open up the public comment for agenda item number five. Does anyone wish to speak to agenda item number five? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Mr. Chairman, I like is the petitioner here for? Petitioner here. Present? I have a question. Yes, sir. Could question? you could you come forward, please? Hello. 
name, please? I am uh, Jared Meekham. I uh, represent the, I am the founder and the superintendent of Hope Academy. Okay, good evening, and thank you for petitioning the city of Victorville. Um, are, are you chartered by a school district, the county of San Bernardino, or the state? We're chartered by a school district, uh, Morongo Unified School District. Morongo. And where is Morongo Unified School uh, District? 29 located? Palms. 29 Palms. And you're operating here in the city of Victorville? Yes. Okay. Do you have approval from your school district to, to change your location? We aren't changing our location. It is a, an additional learning center. Uh, we have 10 actually throughout Southern California. Do you have a representative from Morongo here? We do not. Wait, they don't uh, typically engage in, in the charter school affairs because it's a direct funded charter. Um, according to my own experience, I've, I've served on two school boards in the mm -hmm. past, and um, I think it's prudent for the school district to know the operation of the charter because, after all, they are held accountable yes. by the state of California. They do know. They actually, anytime, it's a material vision whenever we do uh, an additional site, and that has to go before the school board at Morongo and that's already been done for this site. Because oh, we've right. actually been operating um, right behind this for the last year. You're K through 12? Yes, we are. You have always been K through 12? Yes, we have. Okay. Well, I'm gonna ask of you to um, provide the commission with um, some sort of correspondence of, uh, as it relates to approval, making us aware that this is something that they are fully aware of. I think that's the prudent thing to do. Would you agree? I can get that very quickly. Yes, but since we've been operating, it's just a building change. I think it's necessary. You know, uh, quite often, um, charter schools show up with uh, a business manager or someone within the district to assist them in matters like this. And you also have to submit plans and things of that nature. So, and thank you for accommodating me. Yes. Any additional questions? Um, Thank if I you. Get you to fill out a, a white card for me and turn it into a quick. I would really appreciate it. It's right outside there. Yeah. Uh, anyone else that wishes to speak to agenda item number five? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Back to the commission. Mr. Chairman, I would move to adopt resolution number P. 15-014 recommending city council approval of the zone change portion of case PLN 15-6. Uh, adopt resolution P15-12 approving the conditional use permit portion of case number PLN 15-6 contingent on city council approval of zone change and subject to uh, uh, conditions of approval. Uh, adopt resolution P1513, approving the site plan portion of case number PLN 15-00006, contention on city council approval of the zone change and subject to the, attached con uh, to the conditions of approval, and recommend that the city council find the zone change exempt pursuant to section 15061B3 and find the conditional use permit site plan categorically, categorically exempt under section 15301 existing facilities of the state, state guidelines to implement the uh, CEQA. Second. Do we need to add the additional letter of support? Requested. As I had uh, requested, I, I would like for them to provide a document correspondence indicating that they're fully aware of, of uh, this move. It's, it's the prudent thing to do and it's typically done by most school districts or counties or the state of California that they've been fully aware of that. They, uh, we have no interaction with Morongo considering uh, its location. If it was within uh, close proximity, that information would readily be available or a person would be here. Okay. Thank you. Staff would recommend um, Ms. Porter modify her condition to, to recommend a condition of approval under the conditional use permit that states something to the effect of approval from the school district shall be shown for the facility prior to occupancy, something. Motion. Second. Thank you. So we have a first by Commissioner Porter, a second by Commissioner Huber. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That project has been approved with Commissioner Kurth recused and absent from the vote. Thank you. And I move to agenda item number six. 
Yes, Chairman, Commissioners, agenda item number six, PLN 1507. It's a conditional use permit and a site plan to allow for the development of an 11,800 square foot medical office building on property zoned single family residential R1 located within an initiative area. It's also located on the uh, west side of Amargosa Road across from the existing WinCo. Staff recommends approval as conditioned, revising site plan condition number 27 and deleting site plan condition number six, both of those concerning the Sudley Drive aisle and approving the project uh, with the revised graphics that you have attached. Are there any questions? I'll go ahead and open up public comment for item number six. Uh, I have one card for Jamie Nolmiller. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Jamie. I'm with Twin Steps Architecture, representing our client, Market Street Development. Here, if you have any questions, um, I think he already addressed our modification to condition number 27 and planning comment um, num condition number six. Both are regarding the driveway width at the southerly entrance. Okay. Okay. So you're not proposing any change to agenda item number six or, or the item number six um, for the 30 foot wide driveway on the southwest entrance? That is the change. So um, the modification to number 27 okay. was um, reworded to address that we'll be doing one a one way driveway that's 26 feet wide at the southerly property okay. um, and that once that southern property is developed, it will become a 30-foot wide two-way driveway. So we just want to make sure that the planning con condition number six is also modified to reflect that same modification. We were, we were just going to delete the or condition delete number it. six yeah, that's because just gonna delete uh, okay. the engineering condition addresses it as well. So I It was a duplicate comment. All right. So... Delete item number six and modify number 27. Uh, any questions for Mrs. Miller? Oh, but I have a comment. I, it seems to me that um, in an initiative area, this is very appropriate because it, it's not going to bother the R1. It's, it's going to be it's a good, good fit for that area. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to item number six? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Bring it to the commission. Chairman Wilson, I'll find the project category exempt pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 1533. Adopt resolution number P15-015, approving the conditions portion of case number PLN 15-7 subject to the attached adopt resolution number approving the site portion of case number PLN 15-00007 subject to the attached condition seven I'll second that we have a first motion to approve this project by Commissioner Huber, a second by Commissioner Porter. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The project has been approved with Commissioner Kurth recused and absent from the vote. <coughs> and I'll go ahead and open up agenda item number seven. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will have to recuse myself from that this item. I own property adjacent to this. Okay. <coughs> Chairman Wilson, fellow commissioners, item number seven consists of two cases. 
PLN 15-8 and PLN 15-9. The projects consist of two billboard relocation agreements and site plans with, envir with an environmental exemption to allow for a new billboard with a digital display and the reconstruction of an existing static billboard. The applicant, Lamar, is requesting approval of a new double-faced digital display billboard on the dirt area of the Red Roof Inn located at 13409 Mariposa Road. This is in exchange for the removal of three existing billboards within city limits as allowed per municipal code standards. The three static billboards proposed for removal are located immediately west of Interstate 15 between Starterwells Road off-ramp and the Mojave River. Lamar is also requesting the reconstruction of the nearest existing static billboard to the south of the Red Roof Inn from a dilapidated wood structure to a steel structure in exchange for the two billboards removed as part of the Nisqually Interchange project. Lamar is requesting that both billboards be granted to complete the terms and conditions of the Global Settlement Agreement. Further, staff finds that the proposal meets the intent of the Billboard Relocation Agreement section of our Municipal Code, in particular the billboard reduction standards that require the removal of two static billboards per one relocated or replaced billboard. Staff's available if you have any questions. I would like to note that there was two add-ons uh, for the record. Um, there were two comment responses, both in opposition of the proposal. And staff's available if you have any questions. I uh, did have one question. In regards to the time frame for removal, does that need to be done first before the new billboards can go up, or do they work in conjunction, or how does that work? Correct. The, in the uh, draft billboard relocation agreements uh, for just the um, red roof site, um, on the other side to the south, those billboards have already been removed. But for the uh, red roof site, before the city would issue a sign permit to construct the new billboard, uh, we would verify that the billboards have been removed along the river. Okay. And that's been addressed in writing in the agreement. Okay, thank you. I'll go ahead and open up uh, agenda item number seven. I have uh, one card from a Donovan Collier. Good evening, Chairman, members of the commission. Um, we've worked very closely with staff and the city attorney's office for two plus years on these on these agreements. And as staff mentioned, this is really the last piece of implementation of a settlement agreement that. Uh, you know, was spawned out of the La Mesa and Esqually interchange improvements. Um, we've read the staff report. All the conditions are in, you know, agreement with all of them, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? I'd like to, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask our attorney, um, do you see a problem with this? No, I worked for hours on these agreements uh, with with uh, with Donovan in particular and a couple other members of his staff. This is pretty much the last piece of a um, very very long long history. We entered into the city entered into the global settlement agreement. I think it was back in 2012, and this is kind of the last piece of uh, putting the. Um, the condemnation cases to rest. So I do not see a problem with this. We've been working very, very closely with Lamar um, and, and even our staff as well. And thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to agenda item number seven? And none, I'll go ahead and bring this back to the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, make the motion to adopt resolution uh, P-15-017 and P-15-019, recommending the City Council approval of the billboard relocation agreements associated with the uh, PLN 15-0008 and PLN 15-0009. Uh, regarding the uh, site plan, I move to adopt resolution P-15-018 along with P-15-020, recommending the City Council pr approval of the site plans associated with PLN 15-00008 and PLN 15-00009, subject to the attached conditions of approval found in the staff report and the resolution, and find that the projects categor categorically exempt 
under Sequa. Second. We have a first motion by Vice Chair Kurth, a second by Commissioner Dew. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That project has been approved with uh, Commissioner Porter recused absent from the vote. Mr. Chairman, once again, um, agenda number eight is affiliated with agenda number four. I would ask to recuse based on the same uh, reasoning. Okay. On this one. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, agenda item number three, ELN 14027. It's a site plan to allow for the construction of two fast food restaurants and one multi-tenant retail building. It's located at the old Cocky Bowl site along Highway 395, just north of uh, Palmdale Road. As the commission can see, staff is recommending this project uh, to move forward with the condition that it is not in effect until the reimbursement is settled. However, a, a few hours ago, staff received comments from Gresham Savage regarding drainage, traffic, and CEQA. Due to the timeliness of this uh, new documentation, staff cannot address these issues at this time. Um, it should be continued to the uh, May 13th meeting. However, uh, the commission should also open this item for public discussion. Mike, if I could just clarify, this is item number eight, not item that's from the March meeting. So. Oh, thank you. All right. I'll go ahead and open up a uh, public comment in regards to this item. Um, I have two cards. Uh, Mark Ostrich. Sorry. <laughs> Taking them in the order I got them. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Uh, I was the author of the letter that was referred to. Uh, my name is Mark Ostoich. My address is 550 East Hospitality Lane in San Bernardino. I'm here this evening on behalf of Walmart stores. And I noticed with interest the aerial that was shown when this matter was introduced. It's really a very uh, Mis misleading aerial. It shows this site in the middle of a large undeveloped parcel. This site is actually on the edge of an enormous power center that's anchored by a 200,000 square foot plus Walmart super center. Uh, the site uh, takes access, once again very difficult to tell from this aerial, but it takes access from 395 on one of our access points and uh, crosses our ring road in order to gain access from 395. And that really uh, is where the problem lies that I want to uh, discuss with you this evening. First, uh, I'd like to respond. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about concerns about a reimbursement that um, is possibly due from this site for offsite improvements that Walmart constructed when it developed its store. And um, that is an issue. Uh, I'm not here to address that tonight because that, uh, in my opinion, is a very, very small issue compared to the issues that I want to speak with uh, you about tonight because the issues uh, that I'm concerned about are issues that will have an impact on the Walmart store, on the circulation, on storm drainage on the site. And, uh, and, and at the end of my presentation, I'm going to urge you to continue this matter uh, to give more time to... Uh, work with the applicant to resolve these things. I've been in contact with the applicant for about three weeks and I've shared the concerns that I'm sharing with you this evening with the applicant. And uh, I believe that we were going to uh, work together, together to resolve them and that this evening's meeting was gonna be continued in order for us to do that. But uh, um, I learned today that that wasn't the case. And so that's why I wrote the letter. I apologize for uh, delivering it late. Um, but uh, I didn't know until this morning that I was even going to have to write the letter. I have extra copies if uh, you would like them. That one, I think we're good. 
Okay. They provide us with copies. Okay, okay. very well. So let me, let me touch on our concerns. Um, I'll start with circulation because I already mentioned that. We think the site is underparked. Now, um, it appears to be parked in accordance with your parking standards for this type of property, but uh, because of the access from 395 and the way the cars will have to enter the site on our ring road, during peak hours, we think that there is going to be queuing of automobiles out into our ring road conflicting with our customers coming to the Walmart store to shop. Uh, we hired a uh, traffic engineer. It was the same traffic engineer that did our traffic impact analysis when we entitled our store. And uh, she analyzed it and acknowledged that it is parked in a, technically in accordance with your standards. However, it's her opinion that it's underparked when you look at the individual uses. Uh, the site has too much GLA on it. Uh, too much credit is being given for the cars standing in the drive-through lanes. And there's no real restriction on the inline buildings. So you could end up with two fast food restaurants there and restaurants in the inline buildings, which would further impact the situation. I may be off one or two spaces. I believe they're providing about 78 spaces. We think at a minimum there needs to be 91 spaces and there needs to be a restriction on their ability to put food in the inline spaces. And uh, our concern, once again, is because the site's under park in times of heavy traffic cars are going to queue back into our ring road and interfere with, with our customers. When we uh, entitled and uh, designed our store, we allowed f adequate circulation and adequate parking to meet the needs of the city and our operation, and I just don't think they've done this here. I think it can be resolved, but there has to be a willingness to resolve it. Uh, the, the other area of, of serious concern to us is uh, the provision for storm drainage. Based on what I've seen, they uh, – um, on the northwest corner of the site, they're providing for a detention chamber that apparently percolates. When the water is, is in the chamber, it percolates into the ground. And they've placed that over two 90-inch regional storm drain lines that drain into the detention basin that we constructed in order to enable our store to move forward. And uh, our engineers have told us that that they have a concern that the percolation from that chamber uh, could well undermine those major pipelines over time. And if that happened, it would, it would have a dual impact. It would also undermine our main access drive from 395 where those storm, lanes, uh, storm lines traverse. They're also providing for uh, stormwater sheet flowing across their site into a catch basin on our site. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, we, we constructed a regional detention basin when we developed our store in order to facilitate the drainage that we were going to create by our development, anticipating the surrounding development as well. But uh, they, they have no agreement with us regarding sheet flow into our storm drain system, and I, I just want you to be aware with that, uh, of that. I've, I've once again raised this issue with them. We need to discuss it. I think it can all be resolved, but uh, as of tonight, it hasn't been resolved. Uh, because of these, these are unusual circumstances that don't really appear on the surface, but uh, because of these things, I, I really think the use of a categorical exemption is completely inappropriate here because by using a categorical exemption, no one has really looked at these issues in detail. And uh, the applicant, of course, is anxious to move forward, and we appreciate that, and we want to facilitate that. We want to work with them and resolve our concerns in a mutually agreeable way so they can move forward. But to move forward tonight is premature, and it's, it's going to result in, in problems, major problems later on. And uh, so my request for you this evening is to please continue this to your next meeting and um, suggest to the applicant that the applicant engaged with us, engage with us and, and work on these issues because I think they can be resolved. But but as it stands uh, tonight, this project is not ready to be approved. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for listening to me. I didn't mean to be so long-winded. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, any questions? I'm sorry. Yes. yes, sir, if you can come back to the podium. First of all, thank you for uh, petitioning us. And uh, you did indicate that your letter arrived with us today. Yes. And I know our meeting has been scheduled for a while. 
You also indicated that there was a willingness initially starting out to work with the petitioner's project between the two parties. That's correct, right? Um, yes, and there is a willingness to work with them to resolve this. And frankly, that's what I thought we were doing the last approximately three weeks. So I've you're not opposed to, once you work out your agreement and everything else, you're not opposed to them existing at all? Once we work this out, I will come here and support the approval. We're not trying to impede this project in any way. I mean, we anticipated that type of development on this site, but it has to be compatible with what we've done because we have a lot of traffic during peak hours accessing our site, and if there's a problem of the type I mentioned with circulation, it could create you know, liability and major issues uh, uh, with accidents and, and just general consternation on the part of our customers. And I appreciate your suggestions, but um, when we make our recommendations, it's really going to be based upon the information that we receive, the advice of um, the attorney and things of that nature. So yes, sir. I appreciate your testimony today. Well, and thank you very much for, for hearing me. Questions? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Dan Ostron? Hello, um, my name is Dan Osrin. I'm an architect with Cotty Foods, and um, <clears throat> here to answer your questions and also present our project. And I just want to say thank you to staff uh, for working through all these issues that we've had on this project um, to date. Um, <clears throat> we agree with the conditions, and we're 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 okay with the conditions, um, and we'd like to move forward with the project. We'd like to get approval to address some of the concerns that were brought up. Um, I kind of felt like I could stand here with you, you know, and I, I really do express that we will work together, you know, to get this worked out. And, um, you know, I don't see any issues that related to that that are insurmountable. I see these as technical issues that, um, you know, frankly, we see as, as covered in the conditions, Condition 38, which regards stormwater. Um, detention and stormwater management to the satisfaction of, of the uh, engineering department. So we kind of see that as an issue that we're going to be working through. Um, <clears throat> to address some of the specifics, what I wanted to talk about um, was in relation to um, the concern about the, the ring road and traffic. So if, if you'd entertain me, I'd like to read from the um, traffic report that you all received about an hour ago. Um, and it says in the conclusions and recommendations um, that assuming all the parking demand can be provided on site, on site circulation, driveways, and intersections is currently designed for the crossroads development, which I assume is the crossroads development as a whole, um, can accommodate, so it can accommodate the additional traffic that will be generated by the Cotty Foods development. So I think that their traffic study uh, does concur with um, planning staff and engineering staff that it, it seems to be designed sufficiently. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, if, if we had to, we could hire our own traffic engineer and we could get the traffic engineer to, to say uh, that it is also in concurrence with this report that's, that's generated. Um, and just to address the issue of um, restrictions on the restaurant use within the retail building, you know, we've discussed this with staff and with planning staff, and um, we're parked at the same rate as, as the overall development. So we're, we're within, within the context as far as the parking requirements of, of the overall project. <clears throat> and then as far as the storm percolating into the ground, you know, we do understand that this is an issue, and, and we will work with engineering and, and with Walmart to, you know, to, to make sure that this works for everybody. Um, and as far as the sheet flow into the Walmart um, storm system, the, 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 the storm system is designed currently um, is, a, is a treatment system, and it, it, it's per the, uh, the SWIP guidelines for, for stormwater treatment. There, there, there was a hydrology study produced, and, and engineering staff has reviewed it. I guess that's about it for me, um, unless there's more questions. I'd like to move forward and, and get approval. and with the conditions that we have and with also that, that with the understanding that we'll work with Walmart on, on the stormwater issues and, 
and, and any other issues that we can that we can work together on. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I appreciate your testimony today. Um, prior to receiving this late information, I had um, went over the material presented to me by the staff and followed the recommendation as to um, a continuance. I see no change from my point of view in doing that, seeing that there is some unsettled business or a dispute of some sort. And once uh, we have an opportunity to investigate those things brought to our attention, um, we can probably um, um, continue to put our best foot forward in ensuring that you can accomplish your goal as well as we can accomplish ours. Our goal is different from yours, and you recognize that. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, if I may go ahead and interrupt. The public hearing is still open, and what we would need to do is, is to see if there's any more testimony um, prior prior to making comments uh, with respect to uh, whether or not it's a good project or anything like that. Let's try to get all the testimony first. We'll bring it back to commission to see if, if the commission will look to, number one, A, continue the item or act on the item. But um, it is still open, so to uh, make sure that we have all public testimony before um, certain comments are are made. Once the public hearing is totally closed, not continued, but closed, uh, it would come back to commission uh, for all the commentary. Yeah, you know, if I could just make one more comment, you know, somewhat relative to that is, um, there 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 are conditions really that address all of these things, such as stormwater, um, direction of the flow. I mean, this really isn't the last time. Obviously, that we would be looking at stormwater design, you know, from the engineering side, and um, certainly agree that that <clears throat> we'll work it out to the satisfaction of the city as as any project has to do. So, I, you know, we're really looking at this and saying, you know, we can move forward with approval because we know these issues are going to be worked out in in the process, in the plan check process, and with engineering. And I think we've proven all the way through that that we're very willing to work with staff and with um, city. Any additional questions? Um, I would like to know what our city engineer thinks about um, this particular issue. Do you have any comments on uh, right now, or have you even had a chance to look at it with, with the new issues that were brought up? I'm not prepared to comment right now. Um, all I've done so far is read the cover letter. Uh, I'd like to have an opportunity to review the traffic report and also uh, take another look at the drainage and, uh, and then we'd be able to respond later. But right now I really am not able to respond. Questions? Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to item number eight? That, um, he did a very lawyer-like thing, although he says he's an architect. He read part of that traffic study that I submitted to you, the part that said the circulation should work fine. But what he didn't tell you is that that traffic study went on to articulate some severe concerns about the on-site parking. And if the on-site parking could be corrected, then the traffic would work fine. So I just wanted you to be aware that I wouldn't submit a traffic report that didn't support what I was telling you. So thank you. If I respond to the response. I don't want to keep going back and forth, so. Commission, I would, uh, this is public hearing. We, we allowed uh, uh, one of the opponents to, yes. You're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> just in response to that, the, the, the project does meet city guidelines for parking requirements makes you know and there was a comparison in the report which you might see in greater detail of other cities and municipalities and I think there's other different ways you can look at that perhaps Victor's Victorville's parking code is more progressive maybe it's a more modern code than other cities who knows right I mean but we do meet the the code requirements and it's all stated in the report okay, okay. thank you thank you is there anyone else who wishes to speak to agenda item number eight? 
Being none, hearing none, I'll go ahead and bring that back to the commission for consideration. Well, I've heard that the um, two staff members would like to have it continued. I haven't read the packet at all. So, uh, Ernie, do you uh, have any comment? I do, um, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. At this point, um, we have, we've received probably, I don't know, 40, 50 pages um, worth of information, and I understand as to why, why it came kind of late. Um, Frankly, with, with some issues and from our city engineer, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually look through the issues, um, distill them down. At this point, I would recommend that the Planning Commission actually continue the item as to allow the city engineer uh, to look at some of the, uh, the issues uh, spoken about. And, and if the planning commission just as by if the planning commission does continue uh, the item, of course everyone it'll be continue to a date certain, and um, the the uh, testimony remains that the uh, public hearing rather remains open, and of course we will accept testimony again at that time. Would uh, my comment would be would staff would one month be uh, appropriate to continue it? Do we get the get it read and? Yes, that'd be an adequate amount of time to analyze the report and respond. I move we continue this until next meeting. Second. Keep the public hearing open till next meeting. What's the date of the next regular meeting? Just for the May thirteenth. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion from uh, Commissioner Huber and a, mo a second by Commissioner Porter to continue this item to the May 13th Planning Commission meeting. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That project will be continued to May 13th. All right, in compliance with the Brown Act, it is necessary for the Planning Commission to make available time for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that fall within the Planning Commission's subject matter jurisdiction. Please limit the length of your comments to three minutes. <coughs> You're in public comment. And I'll go ahead and close public comment. Item number nine. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. <laughs> item number nine is a discussion item for window signage regulations. And the, as uh, pointed out in the staff report, when the code enforcement department was conducting the sweep, commercial sweep for banners and flags, they were also trying to address window signage. And um, Mr. Stein of Stein Chiropractic asked me to, if we could review our ordinances and see if they're outdated and see if they're, they need to be looked at and reviewed and determine whether uh, the type of sign that you see, um, it's not on their screens, um, Brandon or whoever's in the computer room, but um, yeah, behind, behind me. It's a professionally done window vinyl sign. And see if the city, the Planning Commission, is interested in uh, allowing this type of signage. And I think what staff was trying to look at was, you know, we put together some information from other cities and what the city currently has and it seems like we're fairly in line with other cities in that it's it was intended to be a temporary type of signage that maybe advertised a um, an event or a sale or a product that was new to the business and that's why our code was written as temporary signage 10 percent of the window area 10 20 percent within c2 that seems to be a fairly <coughs> Fairly similar to number to other cities. At Atlanta, their code actually is very clear because they put it into each section for temporary signs, um, whether it's I events for banners or for flags or for that. And uh, I think Victorville's code could be a little bit more clarified in terms of <coughs> what type of temporary signs you have, but otherwise um, it is intended to be temporary. The code enforcement when they were enforcing it, they were enforcing on coverage of the window only and not temporary, the temporary nature of it. We, because we don't talk about uh, temporary other than in the definition that it's 30 days and it doesn't mention whether it's for a special event or for a product or anything like that, I thought that we should clarify it. 
I do not know Mr. Stein. I do not, have never met him. I have only spoken to him through emails, and I was not trying to do him any favors. I uh, told him we would look at it prior to code enforcement uh, starting citing him. Uh, we didn't make that, so I apologize to him for that. The um, so what I guess we're we're looking to the commission for is direction on whether you want to review this, uh, what your your thoughts are of it, if you had a chance to make it through the city and look. What you'll see in the city when you drive around right now is better than it was before code enforcement started their sweep. Uh, they did get a lot of businesses to clean up their windows. Also included in the signage there were some pictures of existing businesses on 7th Street that are violating the sign the sign ordinance in terms of square footage amounts and the temporary nature of it. They're just permanent signage basically is, is how these businesses are using it. So with that, staff at this point would recommend just clarifying our existing ordinance options, but again, that's why we're here to allow you to discuss this issue and see if you want to look at changes. I would say, um, do we know on some of these, like on the Stein Chiropractic and some of the others, are those like one-way graphics that are perforated so you can see through from the inside out? They are. They are perforated. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Um, I believe those are. Um, and the mentioned a large reduction in air conditioning bills because of the the UV protection. Again, do you need a sign to do that? No. He could have just tended the windows to get that. But that, again, is this, if this is something the commission is interested in looking at, that's what we need to talk about. Well, I think we should look at it. I mean, I, 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 I drive up and down 7th Street every day of the week, except Sundays maybe, but some of these uh, auto zones and the, they have sales all the time seems like, and, and Stein could maybe cut his down some, uh, accident, injury, sports therapy, he, you know, he could cut that down. But some of these other ones where they just completely take all the glass and, and Jessica Beauty place, uh, they can't see out there at all. I mean, it's just completely blocked. I think that's just uncalled for ladies, girls, boys, uniforms uh, the same way. I, I think there should be some compromise on some of this stuff and looked at. So okay. So you're okay with regulating the percentage of window coverage? And I guess the other thing, are you in favor of it being permanent or are you do, should it be temporary for a sale or a product special? Well, like AutoZone, that would be a temporary thing because they probably put them up every week. Uh, a different, uh, different advertising. I uh, don't put their advertising right there, one half off. But that probably changes from week to week. Uh, sign, of course, his is permanent. Uh, I don't know what percentage of signage he has on those windows, what it would be, but it would be probably more than 20% or 10%. Um, that would be another question, would be? What percentage? Would be it? Percentage of each window, or percentage of all of the windows on their front edge. So, is it can he group them all together and mash them all together and cover up 20% in a row, or is it every window that we're looking at that should only be covered 20%? <laughs> I think we have to do a lot of yeah. study on this to really. Say. Is there? Did you come across any ordinances that may have required some of this requesting? permanent signage to get basically get it several signed cities, off on or, or uh, several or a couple cities permit. just straight allowed that the, they didn't they don't want to regulate whether it's temporary or permanent and they, they therefore they allowed it as permanent that was uh, Rancho Cucamonga and the East Coast cities uh, Alexandria Virginia for sure it was hard to tell whether Baltimore did and the reason why I threw in East Coast cities it, I like to do that sometimes because those cities have been around for hundreds of years. They've dealt with these issues probably a long time ago. And um, so t to me, it's interesting as a planner to see how they've dealt with them and what ordinances they've put into place. But it, whether they're permanent or they're temporary would depend upon the type of business. So it, you would be 
comparing apples and oranges. That uh, it, it seemed to me that uh, uh, Dr. Stein's um, were very professionally done, and, and, and some of these others were just kind of like mishmashes, and, 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 and I think it should be the total, total amount of, uh, of windows. We should do it as a percentage, you know, consider all of the windows, and because there's no, there's no need to, to, to have every window covered up. You know, if you look at Stein's building, probably that's, if you'd guess at it, I'd guess it's 30 percent got signage on it, in my uh, opinion. Probably. Now you take AutoZone, probably 35 percent. I'm just guessing. I'm in a business that I use square footage all the time. The rest of them are 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, and I think that's way out of line. I, I, I agree. So I, I, I think you should go with it. And you don't want staff to have to go around with a tape measure and measure everybody out there either. You want to take a physical look and say that's pretty much within 10, 50, 10 percent, 5 percent or whatever. That would be my opinion. Just, just to clarify on the Stein example we're looking at. It Chris, is that a hundred? That should be a hundred percent of their windows, right? That's their space they lease. It is a hundred percent. Is a hundred percent of every window that they have a have a, a decal on. Yes, they have do have windows around the side and the back of the building. If you want, if that's again, it should be. Is it the total overall windows, or is it the the on each frontage, or is it each window? Then I guess they can figure out based upon the type of material that they're using what percentage of the window is actually being covered. I mean, could they get that technical to say each dot is, <laughs> I mean, I theoretically? Yeah, I wouldn't. Theor uh, no, I don't think so. Usually you take it as the overall outline of a, the rally. Of a picture of a sign. Yeah. That, that building square footage, his Stein chiropractic is probably really, really small signage. He could allow more signage on that space. Am I right? On the wall signage or on the window signage? On the, on the wall. On the wall signage? On the carpet signage up there, Stein Chiropractic. Probably. He could have a lot bigger sign somewhere up there if he wanted to, which I think this is very neat the way he's got it. I, I would, of course, I'm prejudiced a little bit about glass. but staff would Remember, <laughs> in the staff report, we did try and caution you, though. It, it, is, it is hard to regulate professional. It is hard to regulate, you know, these other signs that you see in these, those are professionally made. A company made those posters. They made those signs. They may not look professional in relation to the business and the way they're applied and the way they're they're overdone, possibly. Then that's part of that's part of the is issue. Is what is professional and what is acceptable. I think you're going to have a hard, difficult time um, patrolling this particular issue. <laughs> Um, I can see when it gets junky and it starts covering up the whole, all of the windows that, that it's, it could, it's really a problem for the business, frankly, as far as safety is concerned. Uh, you know, people can't see in. Three. Um, but, um. Like I said, I've never met Mr. Stein. He's told me he would be here tonight if you, he would like to speak, I believe, if he's here. Funny he's oh. not. He's on the. He was on the school board. Very active in the community. Yes. Well, is, so I, I I I know him personally. I know him personally. For, for me, I, you know, I look at is two separate issues. I look at the the window signs that 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 cover all of the frontage, top to bottom, that are professionally laser made, graphic, artist layout, probably expensive to make and, and put in, those to me seem more like murals, more like, you know, accents. And I would look at those murals as do they accompany the building well, do they stick out? Is there, I don't know if, if it's possible that um, just like when we all have to come in to get our sign permit on the building, it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, staff just kind of looks at that, you know, make sure it meets criteria. If somebody's going to muralize their whole, all of their windows and go from just some window signage to actual part of the architecture of the building, basically, could they come in for a very simple mural permit, kind of like a sign standard? That's part of the problem, Bob, is that a mural isn't a sign. It's a, it's a 
picture or a graphic or a, dis- a you know, a artwork. Um, it, in fact, I think our definition of murals says it's not, it can't be signage. So if you, like when we talked about the Route 66 mural, we were starting to question whether Roots, the Route 66 sign was advertising the Route 66 Museum. So it, it gets to that kind of thing. Same thing. He's with advertising his Steak services. And shake. We did the same thing there. We exactly. limited them to the sign exactly. for advertising. Yeah. And then we had to look at the pic. Right. The pictures were employees, and we even we talked about the, them wearing Steak and Shake hats and stuff. So it's the same thing. It's advertising his businesses, his services, which a lot of businesses want to do these days. They want. Uh, to yeah, and it's hard to regulate. Okay, I, in my opinion, yours looks good and your, yours looks bad. That's hard to to do but i do see a huge difference in some even some of these photos with the full window graphics professionally done that enhance that, that could enhance the building i see it in high-end malls victoria gardens they'll they'll have these kind of things throughout the mall in in um versus what i don't like and i'm glad we brought it up tonight is still a lot of those businesses in multi-tenant centers that just plaster everything they possibly can across those windows and every square inch they qu- they can, and it looks it looks very bad to me. A lot of these, um, for example, I was once I got the staff report last week. I, I really started paying attention everywhere I went, and looked at at the signs, and the very first one I saw was was a taco shop, and the big sign up top said taco shop on two sides of the building. Then underneath they had that graphic paint on the top of the windows that said taco shop. Underneath that, it was the graphic paint about this big that had been painted like five years ago and was totally weathered and burnt out that said Mexican food. Okay, we already know what a taco shop is. Then they had big things that said burrito and all. And they plastered their whole window with pictures of tacos when it's very clear what a taco shop is, you know. And it's just over, overdone. And it looks really bad in some of these centers where you might have a really good tenant that might do something like this, and the ta- that this taco shop might do something la- like that right next door to it. How do you? That looks good. Yours looks bad. I can tell you. I think everyone in this city would agree what looks bad. <laughs> also subjective. Taco shop owner thinks it's going to look great. <laughs> well, he's the, he's the only one, and I doubt it helps the business. <laughs> and then there's a lot of others that I have to deal with in, in real estate where the landlords try to back them down on the signage. Liquor stores are a big one. They'll take every square inch of their and put up posters of different types of beer. And just It's a liquor store. Of course there's going to be Budweiser, but they have to have eight Budweiser posters covering the windows. And then other businesses, insurance companies, will put so much information on these windows that it, they're starting <coughs> to look like um, websites. The windows of the businesses look like websites with every single thing about their business. Windows like a page of a website kind of. That's too much. In, in, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. uh, they, but they're allowed to do whatever they want to inside the building. In other words, they can advertise their their tacos and they show a picture of their tacos and stuff like that. They can make it as junky as they want to inside. They don't have to make it <laughs> junky on the outside, do they? That's what we're trying to decide. I know. I know. And Paula, that, you, just to finish up, I've just had another thought. Um, I didn't really answer the question, but our existing code, I think, is 20%, right? Yes, and C2. So I'm, uh, you know, the other cities, the average seem to be like 25%. I'm okay with anywhere right in there because if you got the taco shop and they still have 25%, and they, they could certainly get their sign up that said big taco sale today or whatever. You know, they have to get it on their windows, then they still have the ability to do that. Percentage, right? Oh, yeah. And that's, you're sounding temporary. In regards to the ones they that. want to have taco sale every single day. We're well, still no, within twenty five percent. Just the like the definition our right now, permit. temporary is thirty days. But oh. what about permanent on the windows? What's the percentage? There's none. There's none. It's there's only not, all, these signage is only supposed to be temporary right now for a maximum of thirty days. And that's what I'm saying. There's no, there's no. We can need to clarify the ordinance. Again, we can change it completely. But right now, I would recommend clarifying it to say how many times a year can you do that? Can you go from one? temporary sign right into another right now there's no restriction there's no it's not it's not clarified that typically it's four times a year not to exceed 30 days you know total of a certain amount of days so don't have that i think there needs to be some i mean every city should 
Every business is going to do it, number one. I don't think code enforcement can stop it. Every business has a little bit of writing on some of the glass, whether it's business hours or something smaller, even my own company. Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, we've got our little logo in, in the Sure, and right some, the center, some cities like Apple the Valley specifically address that it. and address that differently for each type of signage. And I don't think Victorville's that. No, we don't ever. We're not going to look at somebody's open signage or their, you know, their hours of operation signage or anything like that. It's temporary. In regards to the permanent um, signage on some of these, uh, like in Hesperia, Ranch Cucamonga, do we know what the requirements are for someone to get a permanent signage on a window? I didn't see any. The same, the percentage of the coverage might still be there, but there was there was no, on what it could say or anything? No, there was no. Maybe we should need to I look at something that discussion. may put a little teeth into what we would define as permanent. If you decide to allow permanent, yeah. I, it. But it's hard, again, like the Stein, for example. Those are his services he offers because, like Chair, or as Ms. Porter po pointed out, they're not a business that sells products. So their product is their services that they provide to people. So it is a little bit different. It's not a retail store. It's a medical clinic. So. And you have to think about that as well. If we do it permanent, it's going to be for every business in that zone, any any business, any use in that zone, uh, will apply for it. We'll want it. So. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. I think one of the things that we can determine, um, we can determine size, the size of advertisement. What I'm not prepared to do, I am not prepared to accommodate one person um, for everyone, every business in Victorville. I'm not willing to do that, and I don't think anyone else is. Second, uh, third, I would say, um, as relates to appropriateness, it's pretty um, opinionated um, to determine what's appropriate. Uh, I know we also can go from what's, I'm in favor of temporary, I'm not in favor of something permanent uh, in a window. And temporary can go from 30 to 45 days, 60 days, possibly 90 days. Um, but I think it's gonna be quite difficult to please everyone, so we, I think we have to issue a standard that everyone has to fall into, and that's just the way it is. Well, it sounds like we need to uh, <laughs> drive around a little bit more and get some more guidelines, but maybe if we can find out. That's up to you if you're ready to, can we, as their direction on like you said, temporary or permanent? Can we take a vote on temporary or permanent? Can we take a vote on percentage? Well, or, that's, that's or what I was going to say. That we, I, did, I, I read this thing wrong. I, I, I read it wrong. I thought we had a certain coverage for a permanent sign where somebody want, needs to. They don't, they're not allowed signage up above, so they need to put flower shop on the glass or whatever it might be. Permanent. I thought there was a portion. If it, if it was permanent, they could um, present you with a plan, you know, that you could approve. In other words, we can write it that way. There are some, I, I think I, I one think or two cities in there went, the signage on the windows went against their overall signage for the building. They calculated against it. We can do that. Or you can say a certain square footage of permanent signage is allowed on any wind, on the total windows or what okay. you can That's say. what I was getting at because code enforcement in the city, how do you even, right now there's no, not any, so every single business in this city is completely out of compliance, guaranteed. Anyone who has something on their windows out, because there is no permanent. I'm not. <laughs> but you've got I don't a mural. Have a thing in any glass, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> except Christmas time. Just because you love your glass so much and won't cover it up doesn't count. <laughs> but I, I think, I think in order to help uh, police this later on, is if if everyone's given a small amount, 20, 25 percent, put what you need to, you know. Any more than that, it's going to look bad. And if somebody, they, they continue to plaster it full, code enforcement has teeth to say, hey, you get 25%, what are you doing covering every last inch of this liquor store? You know, that doesn't answer the mural or the gra laser graphic designs. But as a starting point, I would think a small amount given, used for, for that business, the, 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 the more. and that's what the other cities seem to be, most of them seem to be doing. A percentage of, of the glass coverage? 
then I even noticed um, that one of the cities requires window signage to be on the inside of the window, which you would think is the norm. But when the window painters come and do that paint, they always do it on the outside, and it gets within a short time, the weather gets it real chalky, and it gets scratched, and it just gets really ugly, and they leave it for a long time. Uh, on the inside, would at least give it a glazed shine. Yeah, but you also deal with the issues where tinted windows in regards to your, um, because of the weather. Once you tint the window, you're, you can't see from the outside what you put on the inside. And if it does have to be on the outside, if it is like, say, a 25%, how bad could it really be? You can still get your message across if you have to, but you're not going to plaster the, the whole front of the building. So I can't sell tacos? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> should, there, um, should there be a safety concern? Is there a safety issue here? Um, if you were on the outside looking inside, trying to look inside of a building, that could be a crime being committed, but yet uh, no one knows that because you can't see on the inside. I don't know, but this is a concern for, I think uh, the Sheriff's Department does visit the liquor stores uh, through ABC restrictions uh, for that reason. Yeah, businesses, a lot, I just noticed when you drive around, the a lot of them have the reflective film on the windows or they're tinted dark anyway. So during the day, you can't see in regardless. At night, if it's backlit, you can see in. But during the day, you, you really can't. But if we limited it like to 25%, 20 or 25%, wouldn't that, you would still have the visibility of seeing inside of, of a building for that purpose, for the safety purposes? I guess, I mean, what I'm looking at is defining our temporary, but also looking at something permanent because you don't want, like, I'm out of compliance right now. I mean, we've got a, we've got a logo, albeit small, it's on one of the windows. So technically, and it's been there for 10 plus years that we've been in that business, in that location. So I'm not in compliance, but yet it's a very small footprint on the overall scope of windows that we have. I would say it's probably less than 5% but also having an open and closed sign, you know, in vinyl on the outside of the building. Technically, that's permanent, that's signage, you're in violation. But yeah, and again, we could write and clarify that open in hours and open and closed. Uh, right. I, I really would like to have opportunity to go around and, and just look at the samples uh, because I, I didn't do that and I think that Rob was it's really an eye-opener, I think. <laughs> and I think also looking at some mechanism, mechanism for a permanent signage on a maximum square footage or to allow for, so like I said, we got our, on the very top of our building, we've got our name, but when you're down low driving through the parking lot, you're not seeing that. You're seeing the window. I, that was the reasoning behind it. So I think that would also be a benefit to businesses, but also limiting not, going, not allow them just to go crazy with whatever they want. Well, this was to start the discussion. It would have been great if we had got direction tonight, but this, this is good discussion, and uh, so it sounds like there's a consensus to... Well, I, I agree with both of them that I think that uh, I'm in... Uh, think there should be some percent of permanent signage on the windows. Wow. Whatever percent it we agree on. Something that staff can drive by and say, wait a minute, this is way out of here. Right. You don't want to go around measuring and say, okay, 2% off. You know, you don't want that. But you know that AutoZone, if you look at that signage, uh, that's way under 50, 40%. And there on, it's 80%. Well, hang on. Go, go, go to that picture again. If you take the, the sign, the window from top to bottom, you've got the, the spark plugs and the coolant and stuff in the middle. And then below it, you have a free battery charging, free testing of your battery, free something else. So, have more. yeah, you have a little bit yeah. more. You have a little bit more. That might be close to 50%, maybe, maybe right, 40%. Yeah, because you got all the windows below. Or right, all, right. And I can almost give you the size of them if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so that the, I mean the you're talking 25 percent they might be able to get the the top signage the yeah. those but not the and those are permanent signs the one that you're talking about the free battery t those don't come down are they they don't, they don't are change those. Are they permanent signs yeah that's that's a regular business for them so when you when you're driving around and looking think about that think about percentages and think about um, Coverage of each window, coverage of total windows, would you want them to mash them together? Would they be allowed to mash them together onto a set of windows and cover the 25% the of that total frontage could be a block of... Think about things like that and right. we'll uh, put it on discussion next month. Good. I'll go ahead and move to uh, agenda item number 10. Uh, opportunity for a presentation of reports by the planning commissioner. Um, I have a couple of things. Um, is a business required uh, to have their parking lot cleaned periodically? Periodic refreshed? Slurried? No, I've missed the no, question. No, Being no, swept. Clean, clean, swept. sweeping. Swept. Sweeping. You, sh you should maintain the entire property, yes. Businesses. But if you look at the, that, um, that parking lot on La Paz and um, 7th Street behind um, yeah, that whole area, it looks, like, it looks like Tijuana. Oh, where are the, um, we actually. The 99 cent store and then there's an oh, okay. indoor swap meet or whatever it is. And, and where it, the building. It really looks bad. Old restaurant burned. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, and in the as along with the banners, flags, and window signage, the code enforcement also did look at property maintenance and address uh, weeds, pavement condition, um, re and requested slurry seal if if needed when for bad parking lots and restriping some of the the parking lots in town are, you know, you can't even see stripes or anything anymore on them. So. Well, that one is the worst that I've seen <laughs> in town. All right. Um, the, the Victorville Chamber of Commerce has a newly formed committee called uh, Pride in Business Community, and it's chaired by Ron Wilson. Um, I just thought that maybe we could get them involved or we could get involved with them uh, in that effort, you know, because they could provide a lot of information that would be proactive proactive for us for our purposes our purposes are to clean up the city and um, it seems to me that they they've got a lot of eyes that that sure. could that could help pride in business committee is that it's it's called pride P pride oh, okay I, I did talk briefly to uh, Doug Robertson about it and he said he would talk to Ron Wilson so you might want to follow up after he has that meeting with Ron Wilson okay then I have one other place. The city lot that is just north of my house, it's behind, it's right next to um, our, um, the Green Tree uh, Golf Course building. It, it's, it's had junk dumped on it for, for at least five, 10 years. <laughs> I don't know how long, it's been since they, they built the, the house, the clubhouse. And I'm just wondering when the city's going to be cleaning that up. All right. You know, I'll, I'll call the uh, officer if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it really, somebody asked me about it the other day, and I thought. Take your complaint here. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Kurth? Uh, nothing, thanks. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I, this morning I, I attended the uh, Mojave Water Agency um, briefing from a representative of the state of California working for the governor. Um, and although he stated that Mother Nature will correct itself at some point, uh, that's not in the very near future, that's for sure. Uh, but nevertheless, it was a, a great uh, meeting, and the information that you probably received uh, they invite everyone to go to their website to uh, to be informed. And from that meeting, I I had a bit of confidence, a great deal of confidence regarding the Mojave, High, Mojave Water Agency as relates to storage of water, 
um, monitoring. Uh, they have very sophisticated um, equipment and it, or technology. In addition to, they have very <coughs> a real skilled force in ensuring uh, water for everyone, uh, quite candidly. So it uh, was very impressive. As it relates to um, our business today, I think we, it, it really pleases me when I see two parties uh, walk from the chamber here and they begin to talk and probably negotiate, work out their issues. That's very uh, comforting for me uh, because it, it shows that people can compromise, adjust, and they both have something in common that is progress. And I'm never in favor of taking one person's view over another. That's why it's important for me to to stay very objective regarding what I've read, what I've heard, and what I've examined. And I thank the Commission for this opportunity to be here today. Thank you. And I have nothing. So I'll go ahead and close to our continue to our next meeting, May 13, 2015. Yes. Well, you won't see me. You'll see Ben. Yeah, I've got a...